G'day, in this video we'll be looking at ground cover. What are the benefits for it for our farm and our soil, as well as how to measure it and how we can implement it into our farm. G'day, my name is Teal Simmons, this is Agriculture Explained. So as you can see behind me, we've got a fair bit of ground cover. Ground cover is defined as anything uh, covering the surface of our soil. Now this can be um, plants, dead or alive. It can also be surface stones, dung or even snow. And so um, ground cover is uh, anything that prevents the erosive action of rain or large amounts of overland flow. Every time it rains, raindrops will fall from the sky building up kinetic energy. When these raindrops hit bare soil or soil that doesn't have any ground cover, it transfers this kinetic energy into the soil and this can cause the soil structure to start breaking up. Uh, which exposes our soil particles which can be um, dislodged. As a result the soil particles can be more transportable and be washed away as you can see here. So water comes in and it washes away our soil. Um, now this is the basis of erosion and it's really problematic when um, the soil that gets washed away is our topsoil and most of the time it is. That's just the soil at the, uh, at the surface but it's highly fertile and highly productive as uh, a lot of uh, organic matter builds up there with our nutrients. And so the loss of our topsoil will result in uh, a reduction in the functionality and the productivity of our farm. So furthermore, when it rains, the rain will hit the surface of um, our soil if it's bare uh, and it will dislodge our soil particles. But instead of being washed away, another thing that can occur is that the soil will become dislodged, settle, but it'll form uh, a surface seal. And so when that surface seal forms, it prevents uh, water from permeating into uh, deeper parts of the soil. Uh, and then it can wash away um, more easily. And so that will prevent water from soaking down into our soil, which prevents us from st uh, storing water in our soil from, uh, for plants later on. So another big problem with a lack of ground cover is that it exposes our microbes to UV radiation or UV light from the sun. Now this can kill uh, or reduce the functionality of our soil, which is uh, actually quite bad because um, we know that microbes have a really important um, role in uh, the breakdown of organic material and recycling nutrients. And so exposing our microbes will reduce their um, ability to make fertile soil. Now combine that with removing our fertile soil through erosion um, doesn't mix well and creates a really large issue um, with reducing uh, fertile farmlands. So the big issues that are leaving bare soil is that it increases erosion or makes it more easily for our soil to be eroded. It makes surface seals which reduces uh, soil infiltration rates, so the rate of which uh, water can soak into our ground. And then it also exposes our microbes to, to UV light, uh, which can reduce uh, soil functionality. So as we know, this is a really big problem. We don't want to be uh, negatively impacting our farm's fertility. So what can we do to fix this? Well, it's very simple and all we've got to do is maximise our ground cover. So when our soil is covered in a material, say it's a plant, or plant matter, the rain will fall onto our plant uh, instead of our bare soil. And so the plant will absorb the kinetic energy from the rain. Uh, and uh, this is better because plants are more resilient, they can bounce back. Um, and no harm is done to our soil. So after this, the rain will just fall off um, our plant onto our soil where it can now be absorbed. Now this is good because it doesn't dislodge any of our soil particles and it doesn't leave a seal as the kinetic energy is pretty much all taken out of the raindrop. So the whole idea of maximizing our, uh, our ground cover is to prevent the high kinetic forces of, uh, in the raindrop hitting our soil. So we really want to maximize our ground cover and the best way we can do this is to choose plants that are well adapted to our climate, our soil and our grazing regimes so that we can continuously grow these plants all year round for optimal ground cover. We, we want 100%. So for this, uh, perennials, 
perennial um, grasses are better. So these are uh, grasses that are all year round um, for multiple years. It's best for them to have fibrous roots, so roots that um, branch out rather than having one big taproot. So furthermore, these fibrous roots uh, will provide more soil carbon. Uh, it will also increase the soil structure as it will hold uh, our soil particles together and it will increase infiltration rates uh, more effectively than a taproot. Another benefit is when grasses have above ground runners and so they can quickly spread across um, an area, increasing the coverage. So apart from protecting our soil uh, from uh, the kinetic energy in the um, raindrops, another massive benefit for having lots of ground cover is that it suppresses weeds. So imagine um, a weed seed falls in our um, highly fertile soil because we're making really good soil um, and it starts to grow. These plants here will um, increase the shade and outcompete um, the weed. And so it can outcompete by uh, taking more nutrients out uh, and reducing um, light pretty much. Uh, and as we know, light's needed for photosynthesis, so it won't grow as well. Um, it will also present a physical barrier to the weed. Uh, so this makes it harder for weeds to grow, hence reducing the population side of our weed. So basically, it, um, it is a method that we can use to suppress our weeds. So with all this in mind, it's important to choose a pasture that's compatible with our enterprise within the climate and our soil types that we use. So another couple of ways we can improve our ground cover is selecting the right pastures, uh, the use of legumes. Legumes are really important as it's a natural way of increasing the nitrogen level in our soils. We can also use fertilizers to correct, um, to correct nutrient deficiencies as well as regular resting of our soil. This will really give our pastures time to bounce back after they've been uh, grazed. So ground cover protects our soil, it protects our plants but also it provides food to our ruminating animals. Now, if you don't know how ruminating animals work, uh, we have a video explaining the ins and outs of uh, ruminating digestion, but pretty much we grow more grass or pasture uh, and we can feed more ruminating animals like cows um, or sheep. So if we wanna measure how much ground cover we have, all we gotta do is make up a one meter by one meter square. Um, we can use um, just any material, just make up a square uh, and we're going to randomly place it in 10 different locations uh, within our paddock or the area that we want to test. Now we want to do 10 different locations so that we can um, average out all our results. This will improve the reliability um, of the results. So pretty much if you have, if you put your square in the only bare patch in your whole paddock and we only have, and we only have one uh, result, then you could say that the whole paddock is um, a bare patch. Or um, if you have the only um, patch of ground cover, 100% ground cover, and you put your square there, then you could say that your whole um, paddock is 100% um, ground cover. Now this isn't reliable, and so um, we have to use um, 10 or, or um, a high amount of trials to get a high amount of results so that we can average them out and get a reliable um, result. Now this is so that we get um, a bigger picture of what's really going on um, in our paddocks. And so what you do, you throw your, uh, your 10 different grids uh, anywhere in, in your paddock randomly, and then you just, uh, you can estimate it or you can um, really work out the um, amount of ground cover. But what you do, um, I just did this quickly, um, make up four quadrants and then roughly estimate um, how much of those are full. So it's about, I'd say 65% of this um, is full. So say so that is ground cover, these green bits. So it's 65% full. Now this is uh, quite poor um, ground cover if this was real. Um, all of this here would be eroded, all the microbes would be exposed to the light, uh, to the UV light. Um, and you'll also get your surface uh, sealing there. At a minimum, we should be trying to achieve 85% ground cover um, so that we can prevent erosion. But this will depend on your soil type and your soil texture, uh, to which extent um, your bare soil will be eroded. Now, 
we should be trying to maximize our ground cover regardless. So we should be trying to have 100% ground cover. Plus, the more ground cover we have, the more feed we have for our animals. So there's really no downside. So knowing the amount of ground cover we have on our paddocks, we can then make an informed decision on how aggressive uh, we have to be with trying to improve our pastures. Even in horticulture, where we don't need the pasture um, forming our ground cover to feed our livestock, but it's still important to have ground cover as it will protect our soil and our microbes and it'll also suppress our weeds. In horticulture, you don't have to use um, uh, plants for your ground cover. You can, you can also use mulch um, or other uh, means of protecting the soil. Now, another way we can implement ground cover into our farms is using them to protect uh, our drainage lines. So drainage lines are channels in which large amounts of water flow through at a high rate. By having really thick ground cover in these areas, it prevents erosion um, as these areas are really prone uh, to erosion. So the thick ground cover can capture soil particles as well as fertilizer runoff, uh, which could have been transported into our waterways, which uh, would pollute uh, and decrease water quality. So by having a uh, good ground cover in our drainage lines, we improve our water quality and hence uh, can improve um, our, pro uh, our farmland productivity. So these areas can be fenced off uh, to prevent livestock from entering. And then it will also give us uh, the control as to when we can graze these areas. So there we have it. Ground cover protects our soil from erosive action of water, either through rain or over land flow. It protects our microbes from UV light and even helps us to store water um, by increasing our infiltra uh, infiltration rates, provides feed to our um, livestock, and also helps our plants to go grow by suppressing weeds. So the use of ground cover is a principle of sustainable and regenerative agriculture. It allows us to work alongside our natural processes, um, like the use of microbes to break down um, organic matter. It's also a natural way of protecting our soil um, and our waterways from erosion uh, and runoff. We can increase our ground cover by choosing the right crops suited to our soil, our climate, um, as well as choosing the right um, pasture or plants for the enterprise we're running because at the end of the day we've got to make uh, a profit but the whole idea of ground cover is we want to maximize get 100% um, of our soil protected um, the best way I reckon is using our plants because then it'll increase our soil carbon uh, as well as um, many other benefits to our microbes um, and natural processes. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about ground cover or you'd like to share some of your tips uh, on how to maximize your ground cover or the type of plants that you use, drop them in the comment section. I'd love to um, see what you guys have to say. Thank you very much.